What do you see as the main strengths of the Limerick team? Um, I'd say, I think they're half back and half forward, probably middle eight, but um, I think their half back line is very, very good. Draw big. I think, you know, Hannon will probably come in centre back. I'd say he'd directly come in for Dan Morrissey. Um, good player, all star last year, but I actually think the other two are hurling that bit better than him this year. Uh, especially he struggled a little bit centre back last day, and Hannon will go straight in. So, three good hurlers, three strong men in the air, uh, and they're fairly mobile. Um, and then their half forward line, you know, Kyle Hayes, to me, Groad Hegarty, not that he's not rated, but he's, I don't think he's rated as highly as he should be. Um, and he's you, you could see that threat the last day wasn't there running through the middle whereas in the last two games for, for Limerick he has and he commits lads because he just has a way of rising the ball he draws lads in but he always seems to be the one to win it and he's gone he goes directly through with it so half back and half forward obviously their midfield works well with that but I think it's they're the hardest lines of the field sometimes to get dominance in and to have good enough players that can that can kind of put you in a position to win the game you know a couple of the the Limerick players. So, who would you have experiences with before and coach with before and where? Um, no, t- t- only a couple there. Maybe Tom Morrissey was in uh, Castle Tri College when I was just there and teaching practice, and I was helping out with the the Harty team there. And fairly obvious, I think that he was going to be a good player, great attitude. Obviously, he's strong, he's fast, he's well able to hurl, but he he had a great attitude. And I suppose a lot of people are strong and fast, but. If they don't have the attitude, they're not going to push it on. So I can even remember him marking around the matter that year. Um, in I think the Hearty quarter final, and he was well, well able for it now on that stage. And I think Ronan was after winning in All Ireland at that stage at minor level. So um, he was he was well able for. It. They were a good on match on each other really. Um, apart from that, then I would have heard a little bit in college with with Dan Morrissey. Um, and Barry Nash on the bench as well was in Castle Tri at the same time another very good hurler who I think it's a good testament to their team that he's not getting much game time because to me he has a lot of potential now I don't know why it's not being followed through because we're not in and out of Limerick training but um, he has a lot of potential as well Like so they, look they've, they've an abundance of him anyway Tom Morrissey was probably the only forward that stood out through the whole of 70 minutes well certainly in the second half three points from play always seemed to find space what is it about him that allowed him to stay in that game when you know like Shane Dowling from the start mm-hmm. didn't work Peter Casey didn't have his greatest game didn't really work for Shane Flanagan either well uh, t- if you look at Tom Marcy over the last compared to those lads over Bar Seamus Flanagan has been very good last year but over the last year two years Tom Marcy has been consistently good mm-hmm. for the team and and to me is a good leader again with a good attitude like you've never really heard anybody questioning for anything um, he's able to hurl he's an all rounder but I think it's very interesting that Tip have to look at that the next day how many times did he drift from his wing left wing or to the right wing he probably got a lot of his strikes over in the right wing then mm. um, you could see Brenda Maher kind of talked to Bonnie Maher about it at one stage um, and even in the All-Ireland last year I think <coughs> it was Dermot Burns got a sharp puck out and again he drifted from the left wing over to the right wing everyone held their spots too much and he put an easy one over the bar so I think his ability to drift into space read the game and I'd say it's you know Paul Knorks they're, they're training I'd say it's a game plan as well and they know that if he drifts from one side to the other it's very hard for a wing back to follow him You marked Keane Lynch uh, when you were playing <coughs> Tipperary 2015 as well now he would have been corner forward and maybe he had a bit of a licence thrown that day I can't remember fully what's he like to, to mark? Well I'd say like corner forward is a lot different than playing wing forward midfield you know yourself um, I I I one job is corner back and that's to stop your corner forward really, especially if he's a dangerous player like Keane Lynch. Like I had seen him the first day playing clear that year, maybe his first day out, and he just tore him to shreds. Um so I, I, I think it's like that though. If I'm a Tipperary manager or management or players, I'm saying Keane Lynch has to be shut down. Um he has to be got close to you saw the last day and I think this includes Hegarty and Hannon half back that those three are vital for their passing game, the way they move the ball. They'll pass the ball in triangles in a 10-yard space because mm-hmm. they just want to get that one man free around the middle who's going to deliver it in. Um, so I think, like, I don't know if Keane Lynch, the man who always hits the good ball in, but I think he's always the one who unlocks the space for the next man to hit the good ball in. And that's that's what they survive on. And the last day was interesting. They didn't get as many of those good balls in, I'd say. Mm. If you were Limerick manager, John Kyle, what area of the Tipperary team would you be going after? If I was going out to... Personally, myself, right now, um, I would be looking at Noel McGrath um, as something I need to shut down. Now, whether that's 
on my half forward line working harder but if my half forward line is working really hard then is Paul Maher getting on the ball and that's really the axis there it's the Noel McGrath, Paul Maher, Brendan Maher, Ronan Maher I think if those guys are on top um, then Tipperary forward line will be just unleashed and mm. they have been unleashed if they're not on top then it's going to go back to dirty dirty play who's going to win the more 50-50s and if you look at it, Limerick you know probably arguably have a more physical athletic team you know they're taller they're longer strides and they're faster in my opinion just looking at the two teams so if you know if I was Limerick I'd be looking at Noel McGrath he's been setting everything up and it's very hard to mark the lad who is a, you know a retiring midfielder he's not pushing forward that much only when he needs to mm. he's a good brain to go forward when he needs to but how do we shut him down without leaving Pogmata free and it's it's a conundrum for him uh, but I certainly will be getting close to Noel McGrath the same as Tip will have to get close to uh, Lynch so cornerback was your position for Tipperary always. How do you rate the two cornerbacks for Limerick? And I know Mike Casey's a fullback; he could play anywhere there. Really, Sean Finn and Richie yeah. English. Well, as I said, I think they're in ways they're three cornerbacks. Definitely have that style. Like Mike Casey will follow lads anywhere they want to go. So mm. you know, dragging it. I think it is important to drag him around the place, make him unsure and stop him attacking the ball. But they're very, very mobile. I, I think as a fullback line, they work brilliantly together because you'd say, well, they're not that tall either. So we'll target them in the air, but you know, it didn't work for Galway last year. They're either coached enough or they're cute enough to know to be able to stop the other um, the other team in the air. Like you wouldn't see any of the three of them really dominating high balls, but they're strong for to shut the man off off that primary ball and they're so good then at getting in on the break. So um Sean Finn I think is 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 exactly what you want for the quarterback. Probably a bit like Cahill Barrett really extremely fast and strong. Um, and Richie English, I think, is more like a cuter cornerback. He very rarely got the better of. And especially when the Limerick team have improved. Like, I actually heard maybe people question him at the start of last year and should he be playing. For me, I always liked seeing him since he was under 21 up. He's cute. Um, but he was playing a Limerick team that was struggling a small little bit. Mm. And, like, as a cornerback, look at the two cornerbacks last year at fullback. If you're on a team that's struggling, the fullback line is probably the one that's going to get um, roasted the most. So Limerick made a lot of changes for the last day. Hannon didn't start and wasn't in the 26 because of a groin injury. Keane Lynch, third sub on. That, that's very telling that he was third mm -hmm. sub on when they needed him. Uh, Graham Mulcahy came on at half time and Groot Hegarty wasn't used at all. So you'd expect a very different Limerick team this time around. But I noticed when plan A, which is work the ball out from your 65 to midfield and find the perfect pass, yeah. when that wasn't working, they didn't actually change. They just said, let's keep going with plan A because it's... It will work so eventually. Used to but the problem is, I suppose, they didn't have the same quality player out the last day. So do you see a night and day performance this time? I would definitely say that they would start off night and day. Um, the team will be different. I imagine like they're not going to be three weeks in a row like they were that day. You know, And this is just being realistic. You're not building Limerick up and you're not trying to put Pipperary down. But like if Limerick don't come different, you'd say there's massive issues mm -hmm. with them. Uh, the game plan is another thing. A lot of your game plan is based around work rate and that, and you didn't see the Tipperary lads turned over too often or looking like maybe the first few minutes they were, but even looking the second half, who was who was getting all through all the work for Limerick? Kyle Hayes is usually the one who does a lot of it. Hegarty wasn't playing, he does. Kyle Hayes looked at, at one stage, he was trying to run after Brendan Meher and it looked like he was in the sand, you know. Mm. It, and that's four weeks on the trot. Um, but there will be changes. The only thing you'd say with, with Limerick is last year they could change their plan in a way because Flanagan was up front and as good as Aaron Galan is in the air, he wouldn't take the same amount of punishment as Flanagan would. Flanagan would, you know, I know he wasn't good the last day, but I would still, if I was tip for not to see him playing because I think he's an animal really. Like He's he's like a banner matter type. You could hit any ball and he'll at least keep it there. He'll at least hold it 50-50. Even if you get it, he's so strong and, and agile that he'll, he'll hold you in that position. Whereas you have Peter Casey, Graham Mulcahy and Aaron Galan, they do want fairly... Not that they want, but definitely the two smaller inside forwards would want it along the ground. They won't want it up high, like, you know. And then and then Galan can win his own ball. But again, he prefer bouncing in front of him down in that, that right corner. So John Kelly has been changed his team game on game. So he started out the first day and he played um, Peter Casey instead of Seamus Flanagan. Otherwise, it was, just, it was the All-Ireland team. And he's been chopping and changing ever since. Jeremy Burns got dropped yeah. uh, for one game. Declan ha uh, Dan Morrissey got dropped. Declan Hannon was rested. William O'Donoghue has come in, Shane Dowling has come in. Why is he doing that? Is it because of the four games in a row? Is it because he wants to 
confirm that I actually don't just have the best 15, I have the best panel, because that, that's been said, and it's, it's a very mm -hmm. easy thing to say that all of a sudden you have the best panel when you start, yeah. start to win a few games, but if the leaders start to perform poorly, then you'll see, do we really? Have? So why, why is he chopping and changing? I, I think it came down to that, that first Cork game. Uh, I've been in that position against Cork, definitely in 2010, where... I I don't know you you're you're after winning the All Ireland you're after winning the league um you're thinking to yourself look at um you 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 don't you don't want to think you're complacent but it can creep in you know and facts are facts and when you look at the match like I know they they were kind of ambushed because Cork had the match and Cork were hurt but Cork walked all over hmm. you know for large parts of that match so I mean I don't think he's going to lose too much he tried he was very sensible in trying a lot of players over the league so it was. Very simple for him to say after one of them championship matches. Well, there was a lad showing form in the league, so we need to give them game. And uh, he's kind of made it into a trial series in a way. He's brought, he's taken lads out. He's put other lads in. He probably knew he'd get a couple of wins anyway to get through at least in third place. Um, and he's come back around to probably being close enough to the team he had before. But he's done that to change the energy. He's telling everyone if Dean Burns gets dropped, who is arguably their best player for the last three or four years, I would say, like consistently, when, yeah. he, when they were poor, he was performing well. He's dropped. Well, then you have everybody else on the team, literally everybody saying, well, I actually can be dropped. Because mm. he would not, would you have thought at the start of this year, like I thought he would have been an all-star last year, would you have thought at any stage this year, well, Jim Burns will get dropped. Never at yeah. any stage. He's too good. But the, um, And it, it is a gamble, though. You look at mm. 2011, like on a team you were on with Tipperary, Brendan Maher breaks his leg, comes back, yeah. doesn't get in the team, doesn't start the All Ireland final, and of course it's very easy to say now that's three and tip that's the All Ireland. I'm sure there's more to it, but it is a massive gamble for for John Kelly to be doing this in some ways. It is a huge gamble because, like at the end of the day, if, if he wrote down one to thirty of all his players, he'd be able to rank them and who's who's from mm. first uh, from best to, to to not the best. So he knows who his best players is, but to get the best performance out of those players and like. What do they say? Talent, uh, work beats talent and talent doesn't work. And not saying they're not, but the, the levels of work at, in, at that level, um, there's small margins. And if, if a really good player is playing another fairly good player, but a fairly good player is at a higher level of, of work rate, then he's going to beat. So he's just protecting against that. And I think he's doing it in, in an educated way. They didn't have to win the last day, but he still, he, he, to me, he put on the you know, highest stakes trial match ever the last day. He put everybody, he had three, four lads that would definitely be starting the Munster final, in my opinion, um, on the bench. And he said to the rest of them, right, you have your chance there now. You know, four of you aren't going to be playing, three of you aren't going to be playing. So uh, it's up to yourselves on the day. And I think he nearly left it to that. And you don't agree with your old college mate, Michael Verney, that Keen Lynch was actually dropped for form? I wouldn't think so. I didn't think he was performing in any way. Poor, I thought against Waterford, he was actually very, very good mm. um, in that he drove on their team and he was coming off the shoulder and he was the one making extra runs so I didn't really um, the Clare match I mean I think Clare was so poor I don't know what you could say well we were so much better but Keen Lynch was terrible so I'm going to drop him I wouldn't think that's true and when the team is performing well is functioning then you know you'd be leaving it fairly fairly close to the same bear something unbelievable was happening in training which couldn't from one week to the other so mm -hmm. unfortunately I don't I don't agree with Bernie on that one